start there. Uh, so I'm Richard Schwalen. Um, like uh, just mentioned, I'm a data engineer at Spotify. Um, uh, my team works on some of the some of the largest data sets, uh, which happen to be related to what people see and do in our apps. Uh, you need to know uh, what people have seen because um, that's being used for for things like search ranking, uh, personalized search. Shows up on your home screen. Uh, we need to know what we've shown you to know what uh, what you actually interacted with to, to improve those recommendations. So those are the kind of data sets that I'm working with in, in batch and streaming on a daily basis. Uh, here's a nice picture of me someone drew uh, once. Um, so I've been at Spotify for about five years. Uh, I think my proudest contribution is this README to uh, the duplication pipeline. Um, <laughs> it uh, perfectly describes the job and does so to an Amazon. So now I'm always on the lookout for, for repositories that can be described with, uh, with 80s and 90s disco. <laughs> um, right, so uh, I'm from Sweden, hence the ABBA reference. Uh, and because of that, I thought I would give you a little smorgasbord of how we use uh, Beam at Spotify. Uh, so our engineers interact with Beam in a number of different ways, uh, use it for a bunch of different things. So um, as kind of a use case study for a company, I thought I would you know, give you a bit of this, a bit of that. Um, this is how we use Beam. Sounds good? Nice. Uh, all right. So Spotify uh, are quite heavy users of Beam. And we've been so uh, ever since we moved from our, our on-prem Hadoop cluster, a handful of years ago. Uh, at this point, Beam pipelines uh, are a large majority of, of all our scheduled jobs. We, of course, have uh, ad hoc analysis on other uh, tools as well. Uh, but uh, we really enjoy Beam in various ways. So how it started, uh, we were coming from our, our on-prem Hadoop cluster. We were doing Scalding, uh, Spark, and Storm. Um, and we really like those tools. Uh, what we liked maybe even more with Beam was that we could kind of unify all those use cases. We could do batch and streaming in one. Um, but when we when we moved to Beam, we we really liked those previous tools. So we brought some of those things with us to Beam, and we built uh, Shio, which is a Scala API for Beam. Uh, and this let us kind of keep developing pipelines in a similar way to what we had done previously, uh, while still utilizing the power of Beam. So Shio, it's a very high level API, uh, similar to, to, to Spark. Uh, and uh, let's start off with why we chose Scala for, for this uh, library. Uh, it has a really nice balance between productivity and performance. Um, so it, it performs similar to Java, uh, but uh, a, Scala, a Scala pipeline is about 80% smaller in terms of code base um, than a, a comparable Java pipeline. This is pretty good because that means engineers actually review PRs because they're, they're 100 lines diff, they're not thousands. Uh, we catch problems. It's easier to, to get an overview of the job uh, and so on. We try not to go super hard on the kind of code golf aspect of Scala, where you you know you do these massive one-liners, um, but you still get a lot of benefit from it. Uh, Scala is functional and type-safe, which makes jobs quite easy to reason about, uh, test and refactor. You can kind of compose transformations, which uh, suits the, the kind of data transformation, data processing model quite well. Uh, Scala is type-safe as well, which Saves us from a lot of headaches. Uh, you don't have the, the jobs that fail after two hours because of some sort of null pointer or, or cast error. Uh, so our, our developer confidence is, is quite high. We also get access to a very large e ecosystem of, uh, of libraries and software. So on the Java side, of course, we get a bunch of infrastructure uh, and Hadoop and Parquet and Avro and uh, all the cloud connectors and everything. Uh, and from Scala, we get some, some nice goodies. Um, we use Algebird from Twitter quite a lot um, and some other things uh, that are useful for data processing. 
Uh, so here's my favorite slide. Uh, <laughs> if you if you haven't seen Shio before, it looks very similar to the to the Scala RDD API, uh, but it's using Beam. So for me, that's the, the kind of the best of two worlds. Um, a, a big benefit is, of course, that a lot of uh, developers joining us are familiar with Spark. Uh, not as many are are familiar with Beam yet, so. So they kind of can jump in and be productive quite quickly. Uh, here's a little example of, uh, of what uh, a word count job looks like in Shio. So you have a Shio context, which is very similar to the Spark context. Uh, from that, we access uh, IOs. In this case, we read a text file. Uh, we perform some, some functional transformations, like that map or filter. Um, we count that up, and then uh, we, we save it as a text file as well. With the uh, shear context run, you assemble your DAG and you run your job. Uh, joins look something like this. Uh, in this case, we're reading an Abro file. Uh, you uh, specify which key you want uh, that data set to be in. Uh, and then we have a hash join, which is essentially syntactic sugar on top of a, like a, creating a side input and distributing that and joining that in. Uh, so this, uh, we have a bunch of these syntactic sugars that make it easy to, to do common but kind of complex operations. Uh, we really try to make it easier for the developers to do the right thing. So now we can have documentation saying, well, if your if your dataset fits in memory, you can use this join. If your dataset fits on disk, you can use this other join. Um, so you don't have to be like the the top developer at the company to write some pretty impressive jobs. Uh, yeah, uh, we have some more in detail on, on various join optimizations and other goodies uh, on the the Shia workshop on Wednesday. Uh, so if you want to learn more, you can join that or talk to me later. So this is how we do our most of our, our pipeline development. We use Shio. Um, you write your inputs. We have a bit of orchestration code around, of course, um, and uh, that's how. A majority of our engineers interact with Beam. It's not mandatory, of course. Uh, it's a tool that's uh, that's optional, but a lot of teams seem to prefer uh, Shio and, and pick that. Um, but there are some other ways as well. So now we've made pipeline development a bit easier, uh, in my opinion, at least. Uh, it's easier to do the right thing. But in some cases, we can make it even more easy. Even easier is the way you say that. Uh, we have some cake mix pipelines, which, uh, sorry for the analogies here. Um, I guess they're similar to data flow templates in a way. Uh, you take um, a common generic use case, um, you add the capability of passing in some parameters, maybe some config, and then you bake that job into a Docker image that your developers can just schedule without having to know anything about what's going on. In fact, I think like probably half of people who use these, they have no idea that they're running a a, a Beam job. They're using Shio. They're running Dataflow. They just um, schedule a, a nice little Docker image and, and run a job. Uh, so let's take a look at what that might look like. Um, we have an image for data profiling where you might want to see some high level statistics on your data set. Um, how many nodes do I have in this field? What's the the top ten uh, Operating systems in this data set, um, what have you. Uh, you can see that data over time and so on. So, what they do is they specify uh, um, the, the image, of course, a schedule. Um, in this case, you don't need a lot of config at all. You just pass in your input data set, uh, probably your cloud project and your you know, credentials and stuff, and then it's just running. You can get some data like this. In this case, it's application version. Uh, so you're getting an approximate uh, top values uh, for uh, application versions seen in this data set. Great. Now, someone who is looking at my data set can just at a glance see uh, how, how quick our users are to update their app or uh, what they should expect. Have we released this, this new version yet? I don't know. Uh, you can, of course, trace these over time as well. Uh, you can see top K, approximate distinct, and some other nice statistics. 
So these results are then published in our internal developer platform, uh, which is called uh, Backstage. Uh, and you can you essentially browse the, the data set and you get all this metadata with it, assuming you have run your, your Docker image. We have another image for anomaly detection, um, which you similarly, you just run it on your, um, your data set, but you can also decide to, to base it off of uh, pipeline counters or the previously shown profiles. So you can run anomaly detection on the profiles that you've, you've run already and uh, get alerts if your data is behaving in scary ways. Uh, so this is using Profit, which is a Facebook library for time series forecasting. Um, and uh, my team uses it quite a lot since we have data producers essentially all over the company. They can subscribe to their own little part of the data set and get alerts for it without us having to do anything at all other than scheduling a, a Docker image. Okay, so we, we try to make it as easy as possible. We pre-bake pipelines and make it easy, but what about the opposite? What about the difficult stuff? Dun, dun, dun. Uh, how do we handle like the largest and the most uh, complex data processing challenges at Spotify? Sorry, but it depends. Uh, it's very much case by case. Uh, some teams prefer to use Beam, some others Geo. We have, um, we have Clio as well for, for audio processing on the Python SDK. Um, it's really up to each individual team. Um, don't worry, I'll give you some examples, so I'm not leaving you, leaving you to dry here. Um, so I've seen in, in streaming pipelines, uh, people seem to prefer the Java, Java SDK a bit. Um, my take is that they don't benefit as much from the high-level API that Scala gives you. Um, in streaming because those pipelines tend to be a bit simpler. They're doing a bit less transforms. But also if you're doing a streaming pipeline at Spotify, you kind of know what you're doing. So you don't really need the, the syntactic sugar. You prefer uh, to be fully in control of everything. Um, you also kind of avoid pulling in some Scala dependencies, which some people like. Um, but as an, as an opposing case, my team does uh, some really big streaming pipelines, like a million plus records per second. And we use Geo for that, um, doing, doing well. Another example uh, would be Spotify Wrapped. Uh, it's probably our biggest data product of the year. So every, every December, uh, we produce a big campaign where uh, we give you a bunch of data stories related to how you listen to data. This might be showing you that your top artist is Taylor Swift. Or, um, you know, at bedtime, you listen to some, some nice uh, bedtime story podcast. Um, so a couple of times, this has broken the record for the biggest data flow job uh, in Google Cloud. Uh, I don't know when the last time was, uh, but I think we're not breaking it anymore. So this job has gone through a few iterations, um, but when doing these large aggregations, uh, storage is, is almost as important as how you're processing the data. Um, so in a previous iteration, um, the, the job would utilize an external database instead of shuffling. It would do row scans. Um, now we've moved on to using Shio, where which has some nice extras for typically, like for these workloads, um, so one, uh, one tool that we have in Shio that isn't available in Beam, as far as I know, uh, is sort merge bucket, where you essentially perform your shuffle once, and then you store your data bucketed by key. I'm not going to go into detail. You don't have to understand this now. Um, but essentially, you, you hash your key, and then you store a bunch of them together so that the downstream job uh, that reads the full year of listening history, for example, doesn't need to shuffle at all. Um, you can learn more about this as well on Wednesday uh, in the Shio workshop. Well, my colleagues will go through uh, sort much bucket a bit more as well. So in summary, uh, Spotify engineers tend to use the beam at the highest abstraction level possible or suitable for the, the task. In some cases, 
Um, that is just a Docker image that they schedule blindly, a black box, in some cases that's using our Scala API. And in other cases, it's using the, the Beam uh, Java SDK or something built on top of the Python SDK. Thank you for your time. <laughs>